everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrea. Today, I would like to talk to you about Jean Paul Sartre's uh, autobiography, The Words. Now, there's not much to say about it other than it's covering his childhood and his early adolescence and explains to us kind of how he got interested in literature in the first place and philosophy. One of Sartre's big beliefs was that no matter what has happened to you in the past, no matter how big a trauma, no matter what hardships you've endured, not only will you be capable to overcome this, but you will have the ability to transcend that experience and rise above it. He kind of uses that sort of philosophy when he talks about his early childhood. In it, he shows you examples of his own life when he was down and could have failed or could have taken another path. So in many ways, it's actually kind of a, an inspirational anecdote or a form of self-help in many ways. But for the most part, it's just Sartre's um, early childhood and kind of his memoir. And you get to learn a little bit about who he was and uh, the bullying he went through or to learn about his mother raising him as a single mother for the most part. It's really touching. But um, again, it's one of those things that kind of is more incredible when you realize who wrote it than if you were to read this from a completely brand new author. Like if someone completely new were to write the same memoir, I don't think much would become of it. It's almost uh, important and wonderful because you know who wrote it and you know what happened to this future person. So I, I really enjoyed it. This was a reread for me and it's part of my reread and classics project. Aside from everything I just said, I just want to mention that this book has some of the most beautiful language that I've ever read and it's just packed with so many beautiful lines and I'm not even reading it in the French. I'm reading this in translation. So I thought I would share with you in this video kind of my four favorite quotations from this book because there are four that I just absolutely love and I think the last one is my absolute favorite quotation of all time from any book ever. So here's the first quotation. All children are mirrors of death. Now it's short and sweet but I think there's a lot packed in that statement and uh, that's all I'll say on it. Now the second one. What I like about my madness is that it has safeguarded me from the very first against the blandishments of the elite. I have never seen myself as the happy owner of a talent. My one concern was to save myself. Nothing in my hands, nothing in my pockets, through work and faith. Now at last my unadulterated choice did not set me up above anyone, with neither tools nor equipment. I gave my entire self to the task of saving my entire self. If I put away salvation among the stained properties as impossible, what is left? A whole man made of all men, worth all of them, and any one of them worth him. In this third one is where he kind of explains why he got really into books and what role that kind of served for him in his life. So he wrote, I moved from knowledge to its object. I found ideas more real than things because they were the first to give themselves to me and because they gave themselves like things. I met the universe in books assimilated, classified, labeled and studied, but still impressive. And I confuse the chaos of my experiences through books with the hazardous course of real events. Hence my idealism, which it took me 30 years to undo. And then the last one, which is my absolute favorite one, and it's the longest. This is kind of him just starting to tell you about his life in books. And it's just, it's so beautiful, and, and this wasn't a quotation on Goodreads, so I added it. So I'll link it below if you want to add it to your Goodreads. So here goes. I began my life, as I shall no doubt end it, among books. In my grandfather's study, they were everywhere. It was forbidden to dust them except once a year, before the October term. Even before I could read, I already revered these raised stones, upright and leaning, wedged together like bricks on the library shelves or nobly spaced like avenues of dolems, and I felt that our family prosperity depended on them. They were all alike, and I was romping about in a tiny sanctuary, surrounded by squat, ancient monuments, which had witnessed my birth, which would witness my death, 
and whose permanence guaranteed me a future as calm as my past. I used to touch them in secret, to honor my hands with their dust, but I did not have much idea what to do with them, and each day I was present at ceremonies whose meaning escaped me. My grandfather, so clumsy normally, that my grandmother buttoned his gloves for him, handled these cultural objects with the dexterity of an officiating priest. Hundreds of times I saw him get up absent-mindedly, walk around the table, cross the room in two strides, unhesitantly pick out a volume without allowing himself time for choice, run through it as we went back to his armchair with a combined movement of his thumb and right forefinger, and, almost before he sat down, opened it with a flick at the right page, making it creak like a shoe. I sometimes got close enough to observe these boxes, which opened like oysters, and I discovered the nakedness of their internal organs, pale, dank, slightly blistered pages covered with small black veins, which drank ink and smelt of mildew. In my grandmother's room, the books were lying down. She used to borrow them from a lending library, and I never saw more than two at a time. These trashy works reminded me of New Year's sweetmeats because their shiny, flexible covers seemed to be cut out of glazed paper. Bright, white, almost new, they served as an excuse for petty mysteries. Each Friday, my grandmother would get dressed, go out, and say, I'm going to take them back. When she returned and had taken off her black hat and her veil, she would take them out of her muff, and I would wonder, mystified, are they the same ones? She used to cover them carefully, and then, having chosen one, she would settle herself by the window in her winged armchair, put on her spectacles, sigh with pleasure and weariness, and lower her eyelids with a delicately voluptuous smile, which I have since discovered on the lips of the Mona Lisa. My mother would fall silent, inviting me to keep quiet, and I would think about mass, death, or sleep. I invested myself with a holy silence." So, I think that's my favorite quotation of all times, even though it's pretty much a whole page. But it's just so beautiful. That's it. That's Jean-Paul Sartre's The Words. It's very small and it's very accessible, so if you are interested, I will put links below. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye!